Things probably look like they're set up the exact same way when I've done all my other Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. But today I am using the Intensity Shuttle to output the preview of Final Cut Pro 10 to my broadcast compliant monitor. Everything seems to work okay except for the audio playback. For some reason the audio sounds staticky. I'm gonna unmute it really quick. This is about the size that the color wheels would be if I was using an iPad Pro. But if you have a look I hope my microphone was able to pick that up. It's staticky and stuttery. It's really super annoying. I can, with the Mac operating system in Final Cut Pro, use you know the speaker within the Mac Mini or use uh, another speaker that I wanna connect into the headphone out. That'll work as well, but I would like to hear the audio coming out of the Intensity Shuttle and going through the broadcast compliant monitor. It'll give me a, a good idea of what it would sound like on somebody's, you know, 40 inch LCD TV. So it's kind of an annoyance that it has that weird sound to it. I think part of it is because with Final Cut Pro 10, you can select to use the Blackmagic Design product for the AV out, but the only way you can get the audio from that particular product to output is by going into, you know, the little speaker that you, you see right here on the menu bar of the Mac OS, and you have to select the Blackmagic Design Intensity as the audio card, I guess you could say, or the audio output for the whole operating system itself. So I think a little bit of blame has to be placed on Apple and maybe place a little bit of blame on Blackmagic Design, because I know Blackmagic Design can have faulty drivers at time. It should work w without a hitch. It wouldn't be a reason for me not to use the Intensity Shuttle if I did have to use my Mac Mini to edit video for clients, but it, it is a little bit disappointing because Premiere Pro doesn't have that problem. But overall, there's really not much more to show about using you know, Final Cut Pro 10 with the Intensity Shuttle other than to maybe disconnect it so people are aware that yes, it is the Intensity Shuttle doing the output. So there you've seen it. it I disconnected it and we're not getting anything out of it right now at the moment. But if I go into window and I go to AV output, now we see it comes right back. So you know it is using the intensity shuttle to do the playback, which is kind of cool. I don't notice any real-time performance loss when, you, when using Final Cut Pro 10 with the intensity shuttle. So Premiere Pro works just fine. This is a 1920 by 1080 timeline. It is at full resolution and I can output easy enough using Premiere Pro. I can skip ahead, hit play. So it works just fine for cuts only editing. I really wouldn't want to apply effects or do any type of you know, motion graphics using the Mac Mini and Premiere Pro. It, it just really doesn't have the computing horsepower you know, needed to do a lot of really fancy stuff. But I wanted to let people know it works just fine. I should let people know too that the audio comes out fine. Here, I'll unmute it really quick. G-Network, which was a lot faster than dial-up. Kind of loud. And I did it for quite a while. It's a pretty cool way to surf the internet. Granted, you know, when the 3G was really slow, you couldn't watch Hulu. You should have been able to hear the audio sounded a lot better than when I was playing it back through Final Cut Pro. It actually sounds just fine. That's really about all there is to demonstrating, you know, using the Intensity Shuttle with a Mac Mini, whether it's for Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 10. It works just fine. In order for Final Cut Pro 10 to make use of the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle, you have to download the drivers. I'm not going to demonstrate how to download the drivers in this video because I figure as a video editor, you probably already know how to do that. Once the drivers are installed, you just go over to the Final Cut Pro on the menu bar, scroll down to Preferences, select Preferences, then where it says Playback, the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle should be there by default. You might have other video capture cards or third-party items that would be listed here. If so, just select the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. I'm going to click out of this really quick. I'm going to go over to Window, and where it says AV Output, you want to select AV Output. After you do that, What's in the preview window here on the Final Cut Pro interface should be outputting to the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. That's really all there is to it, folks. If you want to use the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle with Adobe Premiere Pro, 
you have to download the drivers from Blackmagic Design's website. Once the drivers are downloaded and installed onto the computer, you simply have to go over to where it says Premiere Pro, scroll down to Preferences, then select Playback. Once you select Playback, make sure the Mercury Transmit is enabled and simply select Blackmagic Design Product. You simply select the Blackmagic Design in the audio device as well. It's that simple. There is the setup option. You probably don't want to select no output, but depending on what you're doing, scale up or scale down will probably work out. It's up to you to play around with these settings to find out which one works best for your needs. Now, if you do want to play out to the Canopus ADVC 110, all you would have to do is opt for Adobe DV and then Adobe DV here as well. And now it's ready to output to the Canopus ADVC 110. It's that simple, folks.